Well, Jim, yeah. we, all, we have Dave Meltzer's star ratings for WWE King and Queen of the Ring in Saudi Arabia. Would you like to hear these? Oh, go ahead. At least it won't take as long. They didn't force as many matches down our throats. And I think this is the match you did not see. Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill defeated Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae, eight minutes, two seconds. A star and three quarters. Oh, come on! The match was below average, but the finish looked good. Okay, now, I'm, I'm willing to... I'm willing to believe that it's... I'm reading the review here. Hold on, let me read what Dave wrote, because I didn't watch this thoroughly. The story of the match is Bianca came in with a bad knee and, from the Nia Jax match the night before. Belair pressed LeRae, and then her knee gave out. LeRae chop block her when Belair was giving Hartwell a vertical suplex. Hartwell at one point drop kicked Cargill from behind, and Cargill did a mistimed delayed sell. <laughs> Belair and Cargill used a Shoto, followed by a German suplex by Belair on LeRae for the pin. So that tells you the why. point is, I said, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to say, OK, I can visualize that may have sucked, but I can't believe that it was only half as good as the singles girls match on the other show or the or that the, the Jericho thing was somehow superior to whatever they did if it didn't involve goddamn choking to death on a sandwich and having to have the Heimlich done on them in the middle of the thing. Liv Morgan defeated Becky Lynch, 15 minutes, 22 seconds, two and three quarter stars. And ag again, say what you want. And believe me, I ain't no Liv Morgan fan, but we've got Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch, and that's not as good as Serena and Tony. Sami Zayn defeated Chad Gable and Bronson Reed, 13 minutes, 39 seconds. Three and three quarter stars. Oh, for fun. And, and that was uh, not nearly as bad as anything else on the AEW pay-per-view and was professionally done and not an insult to the industry. But uh, the, he couldn't crack four on his scale on that one because there's no friends involved. Nia Jax defeated Lyra... Lyra, Ly I still don't know what her name is. Lyra Valkyria. Okay, I remember him giving matches with Plowboy Frazier, negative two stars. So what does he what does he do here uh, since the the scale has been inflated? Do they get the one and a half maybe? A star and a half. Son of a gun. Well, there you go. Gunther defeated Randy Orton, twenty one minutes fifty seconds. Four and a quarter stars. And honestly, uh, the only argument that I have with that is that he's rating it the same or even less as the garbage outlaw indie matches on the other show, so it has no credibility. But if I was going to give a wrestling match four stars or thereabouts, I would have to have had, uh, had to give it to Gunther and Orton. And finally, Jim, Cody Rhodes defeated Logan Paul 24 minutes, 15 seconds, four and a quarter stars. And, and again, I said when we talked about the King of the Ring, the best match was Gunther and Orton. The most exciting match was Cody and, and uh, Zabada, Logan Paul. And it, pretty much those were the two matches on the show. So he's got to, I guess, again, just to present some element of credibility, he just ranks them equally, but at least he puts them up there on the AEW scale. But notice there was two four-star matches and fucking a bunch of ones on the WWE show, but meanwhile, there's whatever the fuck. I don't know. Well, Jim, let's get past the ratings, and we're going to try to get to some he's not He's not grading professionalism. He's not grading the quality of the, the psychology or the story and the matches, the work that's telling that story, the, the execution of any kind of fundamentals, or uh, he's not critiquing the overbooking and the mess of the finishes and the, the flops there. He's just... Did they do a lot of moves? So it's not, you can't really apply that to 
the same scale to what anybody else is doing. 